Welcome to Simon Dev. This is the second part on our terrain generation series. Last time we covered height maps, and now we're going to take it the next step and add what's called fractional Brownian motion, sometimes referred to as just FBM, along with Perlin and simplex noise to generate the terrain. Now the code is all available on GitHub, so take a look if you're interested. The link is in the description below. And if anything doesn't make any sense, feel free to comment below. We'll look at a few topics in this tutorial. Notably, we'll cover randomness, like can we just use the random function? Gradient versus value noise. Perlin noise and simplex noise, what they are. What fractional Brownian motion is and how it's related to Perlin or simplex noise. And finally, how to put all this crap together into something resembling terrain. So first off, let's talk randomness. Feel free to skip this part if you don't care that much and just want to move on to using Perlin noise. You can generate a bunch of random values using something like math.random, and you can even make it smooth by making a grid of points using this, and then interpolating between them. This is called value noise, and yes, you can totally use this, it's fine. In fact, you could just make up your own pseudo-random function that takes x, y coordinates, and using math.random generates interpolated values. Here, I'll write one that just takes x, y coordinates, generates four random values based on those x, y coordinates, and then blends them together using bilinear filtering. The generated noise looks a lot like Perlin noise. This is called value noise. And in case you were wondering, yes, you can use this instead of Perlin noise. It's fine. It'll work. You'll get mountains and valleys and all of that. How is this different from Perlin or simplex noise? Well, these noises are what's called gradient noises, and generally how they work is by, instead of at each point generating a random value, they generate a unit length gradient vector. And the reason we do this? Well, there's no crazy theoretical reason or anything beyond gradient noise tends to just look better. It tends to result in better looking procedural stuff, and so everyone uses it. So now you kind of know why we don't use random values instead of Perlin noise. What's this simplex noise that you've kind of heard about? Well, so Perlin noise is a gradient noise. It was developed by Ken Perlin in 1983, and it has no patent. Simplex noise is another gradient noise. It was also developed by Ken Perlin, but in 2001, and it was patented by Ken Perlin. The advantage to simplex noise is that it's the newer shiny thing. It's faster. Now, there's a third option called open simplex noise. Again, a gradient noise. It was developed by Kurt Spencer in 2014, and there's no patent. It was largely developed to skirt the patent problems around simplex noise. So that's the difference. Is it a huge deal? Not really. If it's just a personal project, use whatever is handy and available. Don't spend too much time on this. So then, fractional Brownian motion, Perlin noise, simplex noise, procedural terrain generation, how do they all relate together? First off, often when you see mentioned by people talking about terrain generation, they use layers of overlapping noise. This overlapping is, what, is what's called fractional Brownian motion. Brownian motion just refers to the sort of random motion of objects over time, and fractional Brownian motion just means that every movement isn't fully independent. In other words, there's some memory to the movement. Or you could think of it as there's some sort of momentum to the movement. If you're moving in one direction, depending on the parameters, you can keep moving in that direction with random changes. Stepping back to just a 2D graph, here's how some random noise looks. So some terminology to start. Amplitude refers to the magnitude. So in the case of our graphs here, as we tweak the amplitude, all that's happening is that the range of values goes up or down it's basically just a multiplier against how big or small the peaks and valleys are. Next is frequency. Frequency in waves, like say sound waves, is how many of these waves pass through a given point in a specified time interval. So low frequency sounds look something like this, while high frequency sounds look more like this. It's not gonna be any different for our randomness. If we lower or decrease the frequency, what happens is that we get more random points in the same interval. So now that you know that, let's look at how to calculate the full FBM, or fractional Brownian motion. The code I'll show you, given the point x on the x-axis, what we do is loop and add layers of noise. 
The trick is after every iteration of the loop, we decrease the contribution. So what we're doing is, every iteration of the loop, we're sampling the noise, then increasing the frequency, but decreasing the amplitude of the noise, meaning the noise changes faster now, but it has less effect. And this is controlled by what's called the Hurst exponent, or persistence, as you may have seen it in other tutorials. And what we end up with here is, as we sum these up, the graph on the bottom keeps the overall shape of the first graph, but adds in progressively smaller details from the rest. You can see from the first one here, it's just way too smooth, like rolling hills, which is perfect if you're simulating rolling hills. But if you want, say, some craggy rocks and jagged mountains, this doesn't work. So in that case, you increase the number of octaves, and voila. You're adding some cragginess to the rocks here, starting to look a little mountainous. Now, to turn this all into terrain. If you watched the last video, I showed you how to turn a height map texture plus a tessellated plane into some nice terrain. Well, guess what? The only thing that we need to do to turn noise into terrain is swap out the height map texture for noise. You could think of it as instead of having a height map texture, you have a noise texture that's infinite in every direction. So what we do here is we go, and now, instead of using our height map, we're going to send noise to our terrain generation function from the last time. And now suddenly, we've got better looking terrain. And you can of course go and tweak the parameters all you want. So if you want more rolling hills, I can go over here and play with the number of octaves, and the terrain kind of smooths out here. If I go and play with the scale, the hills get bigger or smaller. So now it's kind of lumpy instead of being these large rolling hills. I can also play with the height to make everything bigger or smaller. Lacunarity here controls how quickly or not the frequency increases between each layer. The default is the frequency doubles, but you can play with it to increase or decrease to see how it looks. We've also got our Hurst exponent or persistence here, and as you increase or decrease that, you can see the effect it has on all the smaller details of the terrain. They're kind of coming in and out as I slide this up and down. I also added an exponentiation parameter, which essentially just runs everything through a power function at the end. What this does is kind of flattens out values. The overall effect it has on the terrain is that the sort of rolling goes away in favor of sharper peaks and flatter valleys. And finally, here's a dropdown where you can select between Perlin noise or simplex noise. I gave you an option in the UI to choose either one. Personally, I find the simplex noise looks a bit better, at least in this app. But people have made some pretty sweet demos with either in the past, so again, don't make this a major sticking point in your decision making. That about wraps up part two of this. We looked a bit more in depth at noise, fractional Brownian motion, and you got some background on them all. In the next update, I'm going to start building this out into something more infinite. So we'll start looking at how to add infinite terrain generation, meaning we won't just be stuck with one chunk of terrain that ends abruptly but you'll be able to move in any direction forever with just more and more terrain appearing. For now, I hope this was easy to follow, and if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, give it a like and hit that subscribe button in the corner. Also, let me know what you'd like to see in the future. Leave a comment below with uh, suggestions or requests. Until next time, cheers everyone!